Okay, so let's talk about the statistical segment length and then degree of polymerization. Statistical segment lengths is actually very uh, well used, and there are different notations. Here, I'm going to use a symbol B, which is shown up in the bottom as well. And the degree of polymerization is a DP. I've been using it. For now, I'm going to use a big N as a as a substitute. So uh, you might recall from the previous lecture, this is related to number of bonds and the small n. And the, the, this is a length scale. So this is somewhat, somewhat related to the bond lengths, right? So this, but how does statistical segment lengths come into a play? The answer is then the following. So let's actually have a look at the, the data being provided. And if you're looking at the, the usual uh, tables for different kinds of polymer, the statistical segment lengths are being provided. And that's in the usually in the neighborhood about uh, six to seven angstroms, and depending on the polymers that you are dealing with. And I'm going to talk about the persistent lengths in the next uh, session of this uh, channel video. And uh, the connection that uh, statistical segment lengths and the characteristic ratio can be found in this following equation. So this is an end-to-end -end distance, h square, right? So that's how it is. And that's a t different textbook using these different notations. Uh, and this is also can be same as the using the statistical segment lengths. It can be used just looks like that. So therefore, uh, once again, if I write it, I think that now you have seen this one now, characteristic ratio n times L squared. But at the same time, uh, this is can be just simply used as an n times B squared. And uh, so now it's a matter of, are you counting number of bonds, or are you counting number of repeating units, which is what we also known as a degree of polymerization, here is an N. So for particular polyethylene, right, polyethylene CH2, CH2 to the N here, as you remember now, I am going to be extra careful using, particularly in these pages, I will make sure that this is an N. So therefore, is actually n number of bonds and uh, the, the number of repeating units is on half of of the uh, number of bonds right so uh, therefore if I combining these two characteristic ratio n l square is uh, half of the n and the b square so this one goes away, and therefore, you ended up having B squared is 2 times C infinity times L squared. And so therefore, you just the uh, statistical segment length is nothing but, uh, for the case of polyethylene, and this is just uh, changing the value of the the bond into some other other length scale. So you know, it's something like a fictitious value as it is. So we can calculate that uh, given that uh, this is based on the 1.54 angstrom carbon-carbon bond lengths. You guys can calculate the B, uh, putting the different values of characteristic ratio at different kinds. Uh, so this is a one way to look at it, but most people actually ended up you know, do you use characteristic ratio or do you using this statistical segment lengths? And, and the answer is, this is, a, this is a what uh, academic community likes to, to, to look at it. So let me give you a, a go back to the list of the polymers that you've shown up here. So we talked about polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene. Uh, that that looks also good. This is all the polymer has a main chain backbone in a carbon-carbon bond. But now look, have a look at it. This polymer is on a polyethylene oxide, 
PDMS or even polybutadiene on isoprene. So these polymers, uh, if, I, if, I, if I draw the chemical structures, right, you can see that polyethylene oxide is CH2, CH2O. So certainly the backbone is composed of carbon, carbon, oxygen, and then this is a repeating itself. So it's not only the carbon-carbon bond and carbon-oxygen bond. So where is the concept about bond and back vectors? And the certainly, the, strictly speaking, the length between carbon-carbon bond and the length between carbon oxygen bond is not the same. So the now concept is getting more complicated if you want to apply the concept of C infinity. Uh, this polybutadiene uh, has a uh, repeating unit structure. It can be 1, 4, and 1, 2. And this is a repeating unit structure, it just looks like that. So it is a, is a combination of single bond, single bond, double bond, and a single bond. So, okay, so this concept about chain rigidity, but obviously lengths for carbon-carbon is not the same as lengths for carbon-carbon double bond. So where is a value n can be used when you use a C infinity? So it's where the things are getting a little bit more complicated. I'm pretty sure they are using some kind of average value of L to represent this, and you know, PDMS, dimethylsiloxane, so it's a silicon, oxygen silicon. So even this one has a backbone, not carbon-carbon, but silicon uh, oxygen bonding. So the, the L choice is different, and you need to find an information. So, uh, so because of this, the chemical details uh, on, on this, this, uh, this one, and also what I think the most uh, good example, which is not shown up here, is if you look at that, this is a, do you remember what this polymer is? Uh, this is a polymer, which is called uh, PET, right? polyethylene terephthalate. And here I will just say N. So as far as uh, the bond is concerned, we need to find some average bond, right? So let me let me try today. There's a carbon-oxygen bond, carbon-carbon bond. These are the different types of bond. And here is a even like uh, some more. The backbone chain is has a, a little. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I want to put a dotted line, this is a, some kind of a equivalent line that forms a. Uh, effective lengths for this phenyl, uh, the para-phenyl group, uh, para-benzene group is shown up here. So therefore, this concept is useful in the beginning, but practically speaking, it's better for me to define, define a length scale that represent the, that related to the chain flexibility or rigidity, if you want to call it. And so that's the parameter that you are going to and to, uh, going to use. And B is now what we call statistical segment lengths. And uh, typically in the unit of A. And all you got to do is just measure uh, cont um, monitor the number of repeating units. Okay, number of repeating unit is, uh, which is uh, essentially say is a degree of polarization, right? So that's why the, uh, in practical way, many people prefer to use B and N to relate that H square is some simply B N square. You just need to find the proper length scale that can be described, uh, that can be used to describe the polymer chain. So we can go back to our uh, usual model, uh, polyethylene, 10,000 gram per mole, uh, you know, M over M naught. You remember, I don't have to repeat this one to you, but 358 uh, repeating unit, right? So this is a, a RU. And that's what we call N, 
right? And then uh, polyethylene, I'm going to look at what's my B value for polyethylene. So let's go back to the table. And the double, go back to the table. Uh, we'll, we'll see the polyethylene. Where are you? Yeah, here it is. And last time we used a characteristic ratio. Now I'm going to use a value of 5.9 angstroms. Okay. So this is a value that I'm going to use. And so 5.9 angstroms. So then we are in business now. So I want to know my h squared value, which is a b times uh, b squared times n. Or let me do it the other way. Usually we put it. Uh, n times b squared. That's uh, to be consistent. So now this is a 358 repeating units, right? And then 5.9 to the square. And so now let me let me do the numbers. Uh, if, I, if I do 358 times 5.9, 5.9. And that will lead me 12,000, let's say 500 angstroms. And this seemingly is very similar to the value that we just talked about before. So then, then I can say that HRMS is just a square root of 12.500. It's actually, actually the unit is square. So now this is a, a 1. 1, 2 angstrom and 11.2 nanometers. So that's the end to end distance uh, for the polyethylene with a molecular weight 10,000. Right? Okay. This value was obtained the similar way of using the characteristic ratio L and an end information, or whether you can use this information shown up here. And then, like I said, this is the one that probably more favored by the uh, the people in the academia because of the generality of the approaches that we can do. We, you know, the concept of a L can be some ambiguous at some point, and it's useful in the beginning. But it's essentially instead of uh, correcting for chain rigidity by some putting a constant, we can actually use a New, t new constant characteristic uh, instead of characteristic ratio, we can use a statistical segment length, and then we can essentially calculate the actual size of the polymer chain. Okay, thank you.